book problem, they're going to have to give us that number. And if it's real life, then we're going to have to project, well, how much did we produce last time period? What's our traditional uh, sales for July? What's the market like in July? And all this kind of stuff and come up with the amount of numbers that we're going to produce in units. We'll multiply that times how much we're going to charge per unit. And that will, of course, give us the dollar revenue. So we get the unit revenue. We got the dollar revenue. We'll do the same thing for August. We're going to say we're going to produce 19,600 units. What do we come up with that number? Again, we're going to have to project it out and think, how did we do last year? What's the market like? How's things going to happen? But then we just multiply that times our 24 and we come up with a dollar amount for uh, 7,400. Same for September. We're just going to project the 20,100 book problem will give us that. In real life, we'll have to project that in some way. Probably a, a very significant process to do that. And we're going to have the 24, uh, the sales price. And that gives us the 42,400. Totals then would be 60,300 units. And we would have dollars in revenue of 1,447,200 in terms of revenue. Now that we know this, we can move forward. We need, how much do we need to make? How many units do we need to make if we're going to sell this many units? And you might think, well, we need to make uh, 60,300 if we're going to sell 60,300. But once again, think about the idea that we may have units that are already in here from last month. And we may want to have a cushion because we don't want to have exactly 60,300 units. We might sell more than that. We don't want to have a shortage in case we do better than we thought in terms of just the budget, just the plan here. So those two things being in, in the factor when we then calculate the production budget. So we have the sales budget up here. Now we're going to say the production budget. How, many, how much stuff and units do we need to produce? If we're producing guitars, how many guitars do we need to produce? for uh, this quarter we're going to break it out by month so we're going to say july we're going to say we're going to first do a calculation in terms of how much do we need in order to fulfill our cushion in terms of how much we want to have left over we want to plan in to have a cushion in case we sell more than we thought and so here's how we're going to do that we're going to take the next month sales so in this case it was the 196196 we're going to take the august 20100 20,100, 20,100. We're going to have to estimate what it would be for October and then put in the units for uh, October and September. We're taking next month's totals in terms of unit sales, multiplying that times 80%. Why? Because this is the standard policy that we came up with in order to have a cushion as of the ending inventory. This is what we want left over. We think we're going to sell so much and we want 80% uh, of next uh, month's sales left over. So if we were to multiply that out, the 19.6 times 80%, 15.680, 20,100 times 80%, 16,080, 20,006 times 80%, 16,480. That's what we want in ending inventory at the end of July in this case. And then we're going to say the budget unit sales, we're going to say the budgeted unit sales, we're just pulling these down. There's the 20, there's the 19.6, there's the 20,100. Though That's what we're going to actually sell during the period. So we're going to take what we want in the ending inventory plus what we think we're going to actually sell. That's how much we're going to need. That's going to be the units that we're going to need, the units available, the units that we would need to produce if we didn't already have some in there from last month. But this is not our first year of operation. So we have this is what we need to sell plus the ending inventory cushion. We're going to have to subtract out from that what we have in there at the beginning. So at the beginning, we had uh, 16,694. We got the 15,680. That's going to be, of course, the ending number here is the beginning number for the next month. Ending number here is the beginning number for the next month. This is where we're starting out with because this is the ending number for the, the month prior to our budgeting process here. And so if we subtract this out, the 36,280 minus the 16,694 is the 19. 586, the 36680 minus the 15680 is the 20,000, the 36580 minus the 1680 is the 20,500, and that's the units that we need to then produce. So these are how many units we need to produce. Now, the next thing is, well, now we can think about the materials, the labor, the overhead. We're going to look at the materials next time. So if we need to produce, like this is guitars, let's say if we're producing this many guitars, we got to say, well, how much wood do we need to get to buy in order to produce that many guitars? And you might be thinking, well, how much wood does it take for each guitar? We're going to have to just multiply how much wood it takes for each guitar, and that's how much it's going to take. But same idea is here, and the same idea being that we already have some wood probably from last month. 